Okay, we are down to the last part of this week's comic book reviews. Everything that is not a Marvel or a DC book, starting with Welcome Back, Issue 5. Um, now an ongoing began as a limited series of four issues, and this is the fifth, the first one of the, well, not the first, the fifth of a now ongoing series. Um, uh, and this does expect you to have read the previous four issues in order to know what's going on. We begin with uh, Lauren, or Lorena, I'm still terrible with names, um, Lorena, chasing these people, these other sequels presumably, at a theme park in Medias Res opening, and then we get to how we got there. And we see uh, Lorena's superiors, the Atlases, in this sequel war. Um, basically order, demote her to a grunt, and then order her to find um, Molly and Tessa, the protagonists of the first arc of, uh, of Welcome Back. Um, unfortunately, Lorena is still trapped in the body of a ten-year-old girl, so it takes some doing in order for her to um, actually be able to go on this mission to find um, Molly and Tessa. Luckily, she's helped out by a couple of other soldiers, a couple of other grunts in the war, um, who have taken the bodies of really old people. And so the three of them go on a cross-country journey looking for the escaped girls. Um, and so it's a bit of a road trip comic, uh, this one. As you see, the, the old people and the really young girl go around doing really violent things to people, trying to find... Um, trying to find these two refugees of the war, um, which immediately brought to my mind a saga, because it's the same sort of plot from the other side. Um, instead of following the couple um, who are running away from this years, you know, centuries-long war, um, we have the people hunting them, um, which I guess we also have in Saga, as um, as we followed the Will and Prince Robot and all that, but we're following different characters hunting another uh, forbidden romance couple, um, sort of thing. And, uh, it's pretty good stuff. Um, lots of humor, lots of action, still that really good juxtaposition of seeing, you know, these, uh, centuries-old warriors trapped in very unfortunate bodies for their job. And, uh, this single issue does tell a, a kind of complete story, going through multiple acts and all that, ups and downs, um, and a conclusion that really wraps it all up and everything. Um, again, it's hard to recommend this issue if you haven't read the previous issues of Welcome Back. Um, but if you have read it, this is a really good kind of catching up point. Um, really good at introducing this next arc of the story, at reintroducing some of these characters. Um, and then just giving us a really good story in this world. And the thing that uh, really drove me to keep reading this book... Um, after its initial four issue run, was that I really enjoyed the the universe of this comic. I enjoyed the kind of Highlander war plot um, and seeing how the characters kind of adapt to these bodies and you know um, just the the politics of all this war and everything. Um, and so we get a, another nice little glimpse at that from a different angle um, in this issue, which is again the the main reason I keep on following this book. So. Still really enjoying Welcome Back, still recommend it, and if you could pick up the first, first four issues, I think they're all collected in a trade that also released today. Um, so pick those four up, pick this one up, and I uh, think you'll really enjoy it. Good art, good story, good dialogue, just pretty much good all around. And good cover, too, just really, really stylish cover. Um, and like, here are some interiors, because I realize I didn't show many interiors of this issue off, and uh, we'll do... One more, um, where, yeah, here's a good one, um, here's a good one. So, what next? Next up we have Surviving Megalopolis, issue number two. Um, we start this issue, uh, with, uh, with Harold, Harold Lamb recording his kind of a last video will and testament sort of thing before he goes back 
to Megalopolis in order to rescue or go on the mission that he was given in the last issue. Um, so we have a little meet the team thing. We reconnect with a few more characters from the original leaving Megalopolis who also return. And then we get this weird little interlude, um, which is the stenographer notes, um, the dictation rather, of a, of a court hearing, of a martial hearing, about how the military handled um, the quarantine in Megalopolis. And we, they, um, we have a general talking to a senator about, um, about putting aid in Megalopolis, dropping food and things. And uh, this page here explains what happened when they dropped Christmas decorations and stuff into Megalopolis during Christmas. And it became really creepy. And I like the little the, the text on this page. Little caption boxes. Future shipments have strayed away from the whimsical. I would say they were downright Spartan, point of fact. Because this is what the turned heroes do with whimsy, is they make it really fucking creepy. <clears throat> we then catch up with Mina and the Crimson Shadow, who uh, is revealed to be Cody, who, um... I forget, I haven't actually reread uh, Leaving Megalopolis, I forget if he was a character in there or if he's being introduced here, but he feels like someone Mina already knows and has a rapport with, which is really important. This, even if this is a completely new character, he feels like he belongs. He doesn't feel like, hey everybody, look at this new character. He feels like, oh, this is a character who lives in this world and has a reputation and knows other people and stuff, which is really cool. Um, and then these two are discovered by uh, by Southern Belle, and Southern Belle, of course, is still demented and creepy, and things get really, really scary from there, as uh, it's revealed that Southern Belle and Cody had a bit of a relationship that Southern Belle wants to rekindle right now in front of Mina. We then see the uh, military team, or the paramilitary team, finally dock onto Megalopolis, um, enter the city when they get ambushed by a hero, and we see exactly how efficient this little group is at completing their mission. Um, and that's kind of everything right before the really end, which again, don't want to spoil. I quite like this book, so I recommend that you pick it up. Um, it is dark. It is creepy. Um, Gil Simone is really good at dark and creepy. <coughs> um, and, of course, the juxtaposition of the kind of classic comic book stuff with the dark and twisted versions of Heroes is... It's just a really good, really good working formula. Um, another great just part of this book is, again, Cody and the way that this book introduces characters where even if you haven't read the previous Leaving Megalopolis, you get a strong hint of um, these characters' previous relationships and how they feel about each other and what they're doing and who they are. Um, so just really strong characterization there with stuff like that. Um, and again, the book looks great. Um, I love all of the costumes of the heroes um, and how like evocative they are of kind of standard hero tropes and everything. Um, yeah, really no complaints. Loving this book so far and uh, can't wait for the next issue. And the next book we are reviewing this week is James Bond 007 Barger. Um, this issue, I mean, it's, as this series is, it is James Bond, it is Warren Ellis rather going through all the James Bond tropes. We begin this issue with James Bond calling, uh, calling M, uh, updating M on his situation, speaking in code, which is pretty easily decipherable to the reader. And then we have Bond getting into a fight with the henchman. Um, standard again, standard Bond plot point, standard beat in a Bond story. You have the fight with the henchman, and it is super well choreographed. This is a really entertaining fight, <coughs> especially how um, James Bond kind of decodes um, decodes how the henchman works like a puzzle and then figures out a way to beat him, um, which is just really cool. 
This leads directly into another um, really standard James Bond trope, the part where the villain monologues to Bond. This is Warren Ellis writing his, No, Mr. Bond, I expect you to die moment, and it is just great. Um, it's not the most creative setup, um, but it's really effective, and, um, you know, wondering how Bond is going to escape, which is, of course, the big, uh, kind of dramatic question is, how does Bond escape this one? That's what we're all looking for, and the way that, uh, Ellis sets up the escape for this is just really good. It's, again, it's really familiar stuff to anybody who has seen enough Bond movies or read enough Bond books, but, um, you know, Warren Ellis is just a, an incredibly talented writer, and seeing his own twists, um, how he implements all of these familiarities and tropes and stuff with James Bond, is uh, just really cool. Um, so I'm just really enjoying this book. It is a really good Bond story. Um, if you were disappointed by Spectre, uh, definitely consider picking this one up. And the last issue this week up for review is Injection number 7. Number eight? Number seven. <coughs> it is really, really blends in with the rest of the cover there, but it's number seven. Um, and in this issue, we, ha we find uh, Vivek Canland make uh, more headway into his mystery involving the, uh, the disappearing ghost wife. Um, and if uh, James Bond was Warren Ellis sticking to a formula... Um, Injection is Warren Ellis just kind of having fun with the things he likes writing about the most. We get, um, Vivek, who's the kind of eccentric detective. We see him in action, um, interrogating a suspect, um, that he brings in from the previous issue. And we see how, again, using kind of like deductive reasoning, how effectively he tears into this, into the person he's interrogating and... Like, bloodlessly, violently, just incredibly efficiently gets the perp to talk when even the cops couldn't make him do that. We also see his relationship with other members um, of the Injection cast. So we see him call up Robin and try and convince Robin to get a real job uh, at a government agency where he would be able to investigate the paranormal and have a lot of control. We see him call up Maria. Um, Maria killed, not Kilgrave. Um, what is it? Maria. I, first name works. But we see him uh, call it Maria, and this allows Maria to kind of catch us up again with the events of the previous issue, of the previous arc, rather. Um, so we see how she's dealing with the fallout of skidding a man alive. And very in character, she, like, kind of brushes it off. Like, it's just a day in the life of Maria, um, brave... Kill, it's not Kilgrave, Maria, whatever her name is. Um, I'm, again, terrible with names. And, like, she mainly brings it up, and we get this little recap panel that's her just saying, Vivek is rude, which pulls, like, great double duty there. Um, and, uh, then we end this book with, um, or not quite end, but we continue with Vivek's, um, investigation into the case, and it becomes very comedic, um, the things that he discovers in, um, in Van Der Zee's home about his encounters with his ghost wife, um, <clears throat> and I would put uh, encounters in italics if I could speak in italics, um, so yeah, again, this is just Warren Ellis writing about the things he loves to write about, um, putting them, like, lots of good character work, lots of good humor, um, Again, the, the way the characters all bounce off each other, how they're clearly good friends, or clearly were friends, clearly have a rapport, have stuff going on, are friendly, I guess to put it, um, but still don't entirely like each other. Um, it's, yeah, it's really good stuff. It's By the end of this book, it becomes a getting the gang back together um, sort of story, you know, drumming up the band and all that, um, trying to solve this latest mystery. Um... And it's, yeah, I'm, I, I just, I really like this book. The art, again, is, uh, and it's the same artist, I think, uh, that he's been working with. And still doing really good work. Um, just really good expressions on the characters. I'm going to flip back to uh, the Maria page for a sec. Because I just, 
love how exasperated she gets in these three um, in these three panels and then in the background you have the color uh, getting more saturated so just a lot of um, a lot of really good stuff that I really enjoyed in this book and there is a part that again at the end of this book as Vivek is investigating the Vanderzee home uh, that I think will remind a few readers of um, a certain very specific little joke moment in Ghostbusters um, which is Probably even funnier here because it's um, it's the same sort of thing—a paranormal investigator and some weird ghost juices. But uh, yeah, just fun, fun stuff. Um, Injection is one of my favorite books out right now. And that is it for this week in um, in comics. If you're interested in my Marvel reviews this week, that is in part one. Batman. I was gonna say DC. It's essentially just reviews of Batman comics are in part two of this week's reviews and yeah so go check those out if you feel like it if not thank you for watching this one if you like this video please rate it subscribe if you want more of these every week or movie reviews i do lots of things now and um yeah any comments questions anything whatsoever leave them down below i'll try and get to them but yeah thank you for watching and i hope that you will join me for some more comic book reviews in the future